Ju and Maeve O'Connell entertaining their guests at their home, Belmore House near Jerpoint Abbey in County Kilkenny. It's just seven years since they bought this beautiful old house and restored it. It came with over a hundred acres of land and farmer Joe had plans to winter cattle in the field below the house. But that was before he realised the significance of what he had bought. I had retired from farming, you see, and retirement didn't suit me at all. And uh, I had three choices, go mad, die, or do something. So I bought this and uh, we weren't long here when someone came to the door looking for St Nicholas's tomb. And uh, uh, like this, this didn't look to be important to us at the time. I thought the field here where the town was would be ideal for wintering cattle. And uh, it would be totally lost only for the Heritage Council. And they came along and they were very cooperative, very easy to work with. And they wrote uh, a preservation book on it. And it's only then we really realised what we had. Medieval historian and abbot of Glenstall, Mark Patrick Hederman, said the first time he saw the grave at Newtown Jerpoint, he felt the presence of St Nicholas. He's the patron saint of generosity and philanthropy. I'm certain he is present here and that the people of this country are meant to take notice of that and be attentive to his presence because he's a very important saint. He is actually venerated in both parts of the church, that's to say the Orthodox and the Catholic, long before the Protestant Reformation. So he's a Christianity which belongs to ancient Celtic Christianity and it's ecumenical, it's with all Christians. Saint Nicholas, said to be the inspiration for Santa Claus, died in Myra in Turkey in 343 AD. So how did his remains arrive in Kilkenny? The Middle Ages were absolutely obsessed about relics and the Normans were plunderers and they just, they took graves because they wanted saints who were the most important saints to be where they were establishing monasteries and they established the monasteries to keep the people under control. They were the ones who brought the body of Saint Nicholas to Bari and to Venice and to here. The site where the grave and church are located is in what was once a thriving Norman town. What remains has been described in a report by the Heritage Council as one of the most important sites in the study of medieval settlements in Ireland. All the remains are there. 13th, 14th century artworks, medieval church, dedication to St Nicholas. But what makes it really special is we have all the documents. It's the sense that it's so well preserved, it was never built on. Uh, it shows us a lesson of what happens to towns if you don't look after them. Sometimes they fail. and. There's a huge amount of knowledge and learning just ready and waiting to be untapped. If you go to the graveyard, you see the supposed tomb of St. Nicholas. You see the tomb of the local parish priest from the 14th century, how well carved it is. You can see the architecture of the church. The church probably went out of use in the 17th century. And then, as well as that, just the setting of the place is really special. The way it sits in the Noor, the way it's beside Jerpoint Abbey, it's just lovely. A LIDAR survey of the site gives a picture of what the town looked like. When you're down there on the ground, it's hard to pick out or make sense of all the humps and bumps. But when you look at it on a plan like that, you can say, oh, there's a house plot, or there's the garden at the back, and you see networks, you can pick out the streets, and the place just becomes readable or legible. So it was really important in that regard. It was exciting too. Underwater archaeologist Rex Bangerter found evidence of an old bridge at the site. So whilst it's a known bridge location, there's been no, you know, pure evidence of it, of that structure being there. And so what we wanted to do is go in and try and find the remains of any structure. And very quickly we identified six areas of bonded masonry collapse from the structure itself. Um, two areas of which are from the arch ceiling, which has collapsed and is now lying introverted on the, on the riverbed. 
When the O'Connells bought the house and land, they embarked on a major restoration project. We worked with the conservation officer with uh, Kilkenny County Council. Um, this is a very sensitive um, property. It's a listed property, um, so we um, it lovingly restored it back to its former glory. It was built in the 18th century as a hunting lodge for the Earl of Belmore. The vaulted ceiling here is, is, is superb. We have converted the two drawing rooms into tea rooms. So I use the tea rooms during the summer months um, for serving our tea and scones. We also have, um, by appointment, we have coach loads uh, coming here from America and from Europe as well. We're a group of alumni and friends from the Catholic University of America and we're here on a, on a trip and this is our first stop here. We've never been here before and it was uh, very welcoming when we came in and uh, it's, it's just lovely. Um, beautiful house, beautiful grounds. This, this whole um, atmosphere, it's lovely, it's so peaceful, it's serene and it has a lot of history. I think places like this have a huge future. People, they don't seem to be holidaying as much abroad. There just seems to be a huge interest in people visiting places like this, getting a lot more out of it, seeing what's in their own country. But I, I think it has a great future.